Hi, and welcome to this presentation on markups, markdowns, and break-even analysis. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you, as always, being this is in video format, you can always just pause, rewind, go over the material again right, so that you can understand it. And if you don't understand it after reading the book or watching the videos, uh, feel free to contact an instructor either by email or by telephone. Okay? All right, so let's get started here. Um, I'm going to be talking about markups and markdowns first. All right, now this is going to be a multi-part presentation. I'm not going to, I didn't put a list, this is not a list telling you what part video covers what. Uh, the only part I can really tell you that's covered is the last part and that'll cover break-even analysis. But as far as markups and markdowns is concerned, I'm not going to tell you which part covers what because I'm going to present it in a different fashion, more of a holistic fashion. I'm going to present it in a fashion that makes the most amount of sense to me. Right? So if you're going to watch, watch all of the videos, make a mental note of what's in what part, and if you ever need to come back, you know, try to look at that part, but really you're going to need to watch all of the parts all together. Okay? Now, we, everybody already knows how to do this. You know, if you have trouble with this, all you really need to do is just think about what happens when you walk into a store. Okay? When you walk into a store, you, know, you see, let's say you're buying a sweater, and the sweater is on sale for 100 bucks. Well, you know that the store had to buy some, you know, pay something for it right, in order to resell it, so that's their cost. And the difference between their cost and what they're selling it for is the markup. You know? And you pay the $100 plus tax, and you see you already know all of this. Okay. Um, however, you know, it, it gets a little confusing when we start throwing in uh, percentages. Um, we can look at this information in, from the perspective of dollar amounts. In other words, $100, cost is 60 markup is 40 But when we start talking about percentages, right, now it can get a little bit confusing because the percentages are somewhat based upon dollar amounts. And also when we're looking at a situation, uh, depending upon how the data is presented to us, it's going to be presented in both dollar amounts and percentages, and we're going to need to figure out, you know, what to do. Pretty much like all the rest of our word problems in the textbook. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk about portion, base, and rate. Personally, I mean, it's a valid concept, right, to be able to learn the, you know, the information using the ideas of portion, base, and rate the way they're presented in the textbook. Um, but personally, I don't like it. Uh, the reason why I don't like it is because um, notice that there's three parts, selling, selling price, cost, and markup. And you have three parts, portion, base, and rate. Um, you would think, ah, oh, you know, I could just say the portion is always going to be selling price, base is cost, rate is markup. Well, that's not necessarily the case, okay? Depending upon the situation, the portion could be the selling price or the cost. Uh, same with the base and the rate. So what you have is a situation where if you're trying to do this by memorizing the portion, base, and rate, you know, you have to memorize a lot of different situations um, and then be able to recognize that in a, word pro in a word problem and apply it to the situation. All right? So uh, for me, you know, if I were you know, looking at the textbook, you know, I I glance at the portion basin rate, but I would not really try to you know, work with it. It's better to try to understand the concepts and apply the concepts to the situation than it is to try to memorize everything because you're always going to have these different iterations. And when you're looking at a word problem, you, know, you, you have to be able to assign the correct variable you know, to the portion base and rate. And that's not always easy. So and then you'd have to figure out, okay, well, in this situation is the portion selling price, or in this situation is the cost, the, the portion. Uh, too, too difficult for me. So I, you know, I'm going to present here um, based upon what I just call common sense and logic, stuff that we already know. And I'm not going to be showing the portion basin rate. Okay? So let's move on here. Uh, all right. Markups and markdowns. Dollar amounts. Like I said, we already know how to do this. Okay, you go in a store. Simple. You go in a store. You see the selling price is a hundred dollars. Okay, and the cost. 
you know that the store had to buy you know buy it for something and if they bought it for 60 okay then you know the markup is 40 right if you don't know how to arrive at that markup all I'm doing is I'm taking the hundred dollars I know my cost and I I don't know what my markup is well in order to isolate this variable okay we put everything else on the other side of the equal sign and doing that this plus 60 becomes a minus 60 so I have 100 minus 60 is equal to what and of course that's 40 right so whenever you know two out of three you're always able to figure out the third using this this method and like I said you already know how to do this right dollar amounts you do it every day every time you buy something in a store okay but now when it, we start talking about percentages it becomes a little bit more complicated right. here I had said my selling price was 100 my cost is 60 and my markup is 40 those are dollar amounts but they're also percentages okay the selling price is 100 percent okay it's always 100 percent it's what you're going to pay okay um, it's sort of like you know uh, a pizza pie you know there's 10 slices in a pizza okay that's the whole pie that's 100 percent of the pie okay um, if you know four slices out of the 10 are eaten you know the remainder is six slices right well what percentage is that that four slices forty percent what percentage is that six slices sixty percent okay um, this is no different you know our percentages all have to equal up to a hundred percent so our cost is sixty percent and our markup is forty percent now if you don't know how to get the percentages right um, if I know that my cost is in dollars right is sixty dollars I divide it by my selling price of a hundred dollars and that gives me 0.6 and then I multiply that times 100 in order to convert the decimal into a percentage and that gives me 60 percent okay and again the same logic applies here if I know two out of the three I can always figure out the third one just like in the dollar amounts if I know you know if I have the 60 percent and the hundred okay I can always figure out the 40 percent you know, just subtract 60 from 100, I mean 100, yeah, 60 from 100. If I didn't know what the cost was, well then um, I'm subtracting uh, 40 from 100, right? And if I know the cost in the markup, but I don't know the selling price, well obviously it has to be 100%. 60 plus 40 is 100%. You know, if it's just that simple. If somebody said I have 75% for cost and my markup is 25%, you know, that's 100%. Okay, dollar amounts and percentages. Okay. Now, um, when we look at this, okay, and we'll cover this in our next video, um, we want to be aware of a couple of concepts, right? Um, we want to look at how we mark things up, and we can mark them up either on cost or we can mark it up on the selling price, right? Remember, two out of three. Uh, when we're trying to determine our markup, okay, if I know the selling price, well then I can figure out, I want to mark, up, mark it up based upon the selling price. In other words, you know, I know that the selling price is 100, well I'm going to use that in order to determine, you know, what my, my markup is. Or if I know that the um, cost is 60, okay, and I base my markup on my cost, you know, I, I come up with a different selling price. You can't just automatically assume that those two are going to equal the same, right? It's sort of like doing a uh, tax. I see people do this all the time in that, and as an example, just real quick, if I buy something for $100 and I have 6% tax, right, that's $6. That means my total price is 106 okay? You know, people will take, well, when they're being presented a situation and they're asked, well, um, you know, to figure out how much is tax, they'll, gen they'll sometimes get this wrong because they'll use the 106. If they use the 100 and I try to take 6% of 100, right, um, 
isn't that different. Six percent of a hundred is six dollars. And if I subtract six dollars, that's ninety-four. All right. Well, I'm using the hundred. That's the wrong number. Right? Because if I take six percent of ninety-four, obviously that's not six dollars. Okay. I'm not going to get into that, but it's sort of this, you know, as to explaining this why. I mean, that, that you should already have an idea as to how that works. But I just want you to be aware that when we're marking up on cost and we're marking up on selling price, it's not, you, it's, you're not going to use the same logic thinking and you're not going to use the same numbers. You can't just arbitrarily apply and expect it to work. Okay. But as we go forward, you'll, you'll get a better understanding of that. Okay. So that's the end of this uh, presentation, and I'll see you in the next presentation.